Hi guys, I have somebody here with me today. It's our special guest, Benny. Can you say hi? Benny is my grandson and his mom just went to work and we're babysitting and we've been meaning to take this video all day, but here we are doing it now and that's okay because you get to see some cute little baby bubs. So this one, this video was kind of nerve wracking for me, like um, just feeling nervous and not sure how much I want to share about this online. But if it helps somebody else, then I am ready to be an open book and do what I can to encourage you. If you hear voices and stuff um, right below me, a very exciting day. Um, we have an electrician here who's a friend teaching my son-in-law and my husband how to wire a house and they are working on my personal training studio. It is a disaster down there and we've been working on it for over a year and hopefully by Christmas I will be able to start seeing clients in there. So that's what they're working on and that's kind of what um, I think this video is going to be about is um, how I became a personal trainer and why in the world and still chubby and still a personal trainer and all of that kind of stuff. Oh, can you, did you find yourself yet? Right here? Anyway, so I've always loved fitness and my dad was a big part of that. He was always into fitness growing up and he had in our unfinished gross basement, he had um, an exercise bike and a rowing machine and electrical and um, different pieces of equipment would come in and out of our home, but he always made that a priority for him and encouraged us to be active as well. Well, that didn't stop me from um, having childhood obesity. And if I can find a photo, I will drop it in um, to show you. And honestly, I was smaller then than I am now, but as a child, it was overwhelming for me. I couldn't wear clothes in the girls department. In fact, I was bigger than my mom by the time I was 10. And finally, by the time I was 12, um, I made a decision that I was not going to live like that my whole life. My dad's side of the family um, did suffer from obesity and health complications, but more of the emotional complications that come with that. And so um, I started researching nutrition at 12 and what Cali learned what calories was and um, exercise. And I started training myself. And by the time I turned 13 in August and went back to school in a couple weeks, I looked completely different. I had lost 30 pounds over the summer and I gained um, just a new confidence in myself. And, and I don't know, just a new healthier me. Well, fast forward, I was able to just live that healthy lifestyle. It was never easy for me. I could never eat just whatever I wanted. I didn't like diet. I just really, if it was um, ice cream or sweets or something that was really... Um, a treat food, I treated it like a treat. And then I ate more fruits and vegetables and healthy um, lean proteins and things like that. And um, I didn't really restrict myself. If I was hungry, I ate. Um, and if I wasn't, I didn't. And that's how I maintained my weight um, until I had my first child, who's now 20, and married and gave me this. And um, with her, I gained 50 at least pounds during that pregnancy. Part of that was a little bit of toxemia and water retention, but the weight didn't fall off. Everyone's like, just breastfeed and it'll be fine. Well, it wasn't fine. It took a lot of work for me to lose the baby weight and I still kept on. See, so I, I had started at about 125 pounds and the lowest I ever got after my babies was 140. Well, that was kind of a healthier weight for me. I didn't realize 125 pounds was an ideal for my frame and 140 of muscle is. Um, and so I think that muscle is a big part of things. Like if I'm not as strong, then 140 pounds would be a little heavy for me, but um, being muscular. Well, I'm 30 pounds above that now. And um, after my sixth baby, I did lose back down to that 140. That seemed to be my benchmark. For me, that's a size six. Um, I felt fine <laughs> at that. And um, I would honestly love to be that again. At 140, I still felt, I, I say I felt fine. Um, I allowed myself to be in photos and stuff, but in the back of my mind was always like, I need to lose that last 15 pounds. Um, I wish I could have just enjoyed 
that weight that I was at and, and just not had that always on my mind. Why do I always have to change myself? Why can't I just be happy where I am? And um, that's something that I'm working on. So now that I'm 30 pounds heavier, I'm really working on that part of self-acceptance of um, where I'm at. Nobody makes fun of a 44-year-old grandma for her weight. You know what I mean? Like I'm not back in middle school. I don't need that. The only person that's mean to me about it is me. Now I do have some health complications. Um, I don't know if I can show you. Um, part of it is my feet. I do work during the day on my feet and the extra weight makes my feet really sore. Are you going to tell stories? And then another thing that I have is um, thoracic outlet syndrome and it's vascular. So that just means that there is a pinch in my collarbone um, into the blood vessels leading in my arm. For some people, it can be um, neurological or nervous system nerves <laughs> and it pinches a nerve and they get a lot of like pain. Well, for me, it traps blood into my arm and you can see it's not showing up on camera. I've got gigantic blue veins that run into my arms. You can see that one right there. Um, the right side actually isn't as bad as the left side. And just sit right here next to me for a second. And so in the left side, you can't see it as bad. And let's, I don't know, you can't see my whole body <laughs> right now. So I won't, I won't try to show you, but it makes my upper arms really large. Now, that's fine. Uh, I've lived my life. That's fine <laughs> to have larger arms, but the health problems is the problem with it. So um, that trapped blood in my arms, not healthy. It can cause blood clots, which could then travel to my lungs, my heart, my brain and cause some serious problems. So yeah, so I have an option. I can have a cervical rib removed to make more space or I could... <laughs> Or I could just lose a few pounds and open that area up that it's being pinched off by extra body fat. You would tell us. You would tell us the stories. Yeah. So anywho, that's my main motivation, but my complication is... <laughs> He's so great. He's so great. Um, I have adrenal fatigue syndrome which um, comes and goes for right now I feel really great and a few years ago I was completely bed bound for three years where I was up for two hours out of 24 hours where I could stand on my feet and the rest of the time my cortisol levels were so low that I could not stand without passing out and I'm under or was not currently but was under the care of a doctor that helped me navigate that and get back to the to where I am right now I'm able to work and be a mom and a grandma and play and work out and train clients and do all those things. But the complication with that is whenever I try to work out, <laughs> he just wants to tell the story. Yeah. Whenever I try to work out hard, it stresses my adrenals and I'm back in bed. So also if I try to eat, at a calorie deficit, um, it stresses my adrenals as well. And so instead of burning fat, my metabolism drops and I'm back in bed. And so I'm trying to navigate that healing process, working with the body chemistry that I have and, and what I did to myself, stressing myself in my younger adult years that has created this problem and how I can get back to health. Well, I'm going to see if I can find an uncle to help us out with our chatty little Benny. He's so sweet. But we'll be right back. Okay, great. The uncles just got back from school and they're always dying for their chance to get their hands on Benny. So, so there was one willing to help us out. And anyway, he was the best part of the video. So I'm sorry that I had to get rid of him. But okay, my point was... <laughs> um. When I eat in a calorie deficit, actually, um, your body releases cortisol. It goes and gets fat, um, brings it to the liver to be turned into energy. That super simplified version of it. Well, that release of cortisol creates a complete panic in me. Like, I think maybe that's why we get hangry. But for me, I'm just all out like, like miserable. And if I don't eat 
to prevent that calorie deficit, I have low energy and I just feel that sort of panic all the time. So my kind of um, take on things, and I have been struggling with this for a couple of years, trying to find a balance that works for my body and I'm still working at it. And in the meantime though, I'm building muscle, I'm building endurance, I'm able to exercise, I'm trying to choose healthy foods. So even if I'm not in a calorie deficit, I'm eating foods that are nourishing my body. Um, so I'm not necessarily burning body fat that way, but things are changing. I feel better, I feel more energetic, um, I look better, um, things like that. But So my balance, my, my thing that I'm working on is how do I deal with that panic feeling? How do I facilitate a calmness regardless of my situation with food or with stress in life or wherever it is? And so um, that's where I'm trying to make the change in my life. Hopefully that will help me to where I can eat a more appropriate amount of food for my frame and start to resolve the situation with the vascular syndrome and my feet and hopefully prevent some degenerative diseases that are on the horizon if that I cannot get my weight under control. So all that to say, if you're still here watching, thank you for putting up with that. If you'd like to hear from a chubby personal trainer and my journey in fitness for myself and recipes and tips along the way, please post it in the comments. I was gonna make this channel mostly about saving money and DIYs and things like that. And my daughter, that's 20, the, the mom of that sweet baby, she's like, mom, you are passionate about health. Your videos need to be about health and fitness. That's where you come alive and that's where your expertise is and that's what we wanna see about. Well, when I tried that on my blog, back before I stopped blogging, which is a whole nother story, um, I felt like there, I was speaking to no one. Like when I started talking about health and fitness, nobody was interested. And so I was like, maybe it's me. Maybe it's cause I'm chubby <laughs> that nobody wants to hear about health and fitness for me. And so, <sighs> Something has changed where I started a Facebook group called Chat with a Personal Trainer, and there's about just 200 um, friends over there that we talk together. And I found that people did want to hear about that, and we've had some really great discussions. And so you're welcome to join us over there too. It's free to join Chat with a Personal Trainer on Facebook. But if you'd like to see more helpful videos along those lines, not all of them, because I got tons of supplies that I have purchased ahead for DIYs, and I've got to do those. <laughs> But um, if you would also be interested in hearing about health and fitness, please just drop me a note and tell me where you're at um, in, the, in the comments and what kind of things that would be helpful for you. And I would love to make some videos along that line. I mean, I've put in all this time and education to get to this point in my career with it, and I would love to help you out if that's something that I could do. So. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and I'll see you next week.